Welcome to another episode of Class Haven Farm. So what are we doing today? Well, we're not doing a whole heck of a lot. Obviously, you can see I'm still kind of down and out for a little bit. Got a couple more weeks of this. Uh, but I thought uh, I would change it up a little bit. Obviously, I can't be out here dealing with my chickens and firewood and the garden and all that. So I thought maybe I would give people some advice on what to do if uh, you're going through a divorce. So I've been uh, going through that process. It's officially done now, but it uh, took about two years to get com completely done with it. So I uh, thought maybe I'd give you guys some advice and talk about some of the things that worked really well and some of the things to stay away from. So stay tuned. This is your first time here at the channel. Uh, welcome. My name is Andy. Uh, obviously, uh, today we're talking about divorce, but most of the time on my channel, uh, we're talking about my chickens. We're talking about firewood. You'll see me on my tractor, on my equipment, doing things, kind of homesteading. Uh, you know, where I'm at now is uh, I'm on a six acre property that I bought just uh, just over a year ago. Uh, it was May 4th was was uh, makes it a year. And uh, I bought this. Uh, house that had six acres old tobacco barn on it. The house needed a lot of work. I uh, needed to gut out the bathroom, gut out the kitchen, just a lot of, lot of stuff that needed to be done on the house before you could move in. And um, so uh, now I'm kind of doing my channel here and where I'm at here on my property is probably one of my favorite spots on the property. I'll show it to you real quick. So it's in the bottom of my lower pasture field. And uh, Probably one of the places that I sometimes just like to come and just sit, just kind of in this little corner. If you take this trail up, it's an old tractor path that the gentleman that uh, used to own this property had an old 40 John Deere that he used to bring down from the barn down here to cut this bottom field. And uh, my game plan is maybe in the winter is to go in here and clear that out and open it up so I can bring my tractor and possibly even hay equipment down here uh, so I can do some hay out of this bottom field. But to get back on the topic uh, that I brought up today is uh, is divorce. So just over two years ago, I started this uh, this whole process. And uh, I will tell you guys this, I, I don't wish divorce on anybody. Uh, I would hope that two people, when they decide to get married and start a family, that they figure it out. Um, because I really think they can. I think if they really want to put the time and effort in. Uh, both people can. Um, you can't just have one person that's trying to do it. It's, it has to be both of them. But sometimes it doesn't work out, like in my situation. And um, it sucks. It's not fun, especially when you have kids involved. Uh, it's definitely not fun. Uh, here's probably the best advice. If you're watching this because you're going through a divorce, here's the best advice that I can give you. Your feelings mean absolutely nothing. When you got married, you got married because of the feelings that you had for the other person and the feelings that the other person had for you. None of that matters when you're going through a divorce. So if the other person in the marriage, you know, if they decided to skip out and cheat and do all this stuff, none of it matters. And to be perfectly honest with you, judges don't care. Judges don't care. Uh, the attorneys care because they're going to get more money because they can play the game back and forth, but um, nobody cares. Um, you're going to get to a point where you'll, especially if you're the person that's trying to figure out what to do to save it, um, you're going to get to a low point and you're going to be grasping for anybody and everybody around you. And here's what I'm going to tell you. Uh, watch who you talk to. Watch who you vent to. There's a lot of snakes out there, a lot of people who will tell you that they're there for you. They're not there for you. They just want to get caught up in the drama because to be perfectly honest with you, most people 
are just glad it's not them going through what you're going through. Those people that uh, are going to get involved because they care about you, uh, really, they're just doing that because secretly they are having the same issues in their marriage, and they're just trying to see how you go about it so they can learn and maybe not make the same mistakes you make or whatever. Or they're going back and giving information to the other half. That happens a lot. <laughs> and uh, I will tell you probably the biggest issue that I have is that I, I don't hide my feelings. I'm straight up. Um, I will tell you when you're going through a divorce, you, you need to curve what you say, what you do, all that. You do. You, you do. I don't care how right you think you are. You, you do. Especially if you've got kids involved. Um, I, I share this with, uh, with a lot of groups that I work with and a lot of people that, that reach out to me and, and ask me. I, have, uh, I had a very good friend of mine. She gave me this rule. It's called the rule of three. All right. So the rule of three, anytime you're faced with a problem, especially if it's uh, your co-parent, because you can get used to calling your ex your co-parent because that's that's what that becomes, becomes a co-parent. Um, when you're faced with something that triggers an emotion, okay, and you're going through the divorce process or you've been divorced and you're going through the co-parenting thing um, and it triggers an emotion. Again, your emotions mean nothing. So you, you got to stop, right? So use the rule of three and the rule of three is when you're faced with something that triggers an emotion, you give it three seconds, all right? And at the end of those three seconds, if you're still triggered by whatever emotion you're feeling, whatever it is, sad, upset, angry, whatever, whatever your emotion is, give it three seconds. After three seconds, if you're still feeling that way, then give it three minutes. After three minutes, if you're still feeling that way, give it three hours. Kind of give a drift. Give it three days. Give it three weeks. Give it three months. Give it three years. It's the rule of three. And what that does is it causes you to slow everything down and get rid of the emotion and look at it logically. Probably the best advice I got is what do you want going through this process? Well, what I wanted was I wanted to be free. I wanted to be free. I didn't want to be controlled anymore. I want to be able to do my own thing, right? Okay. So if that's what you want, you want your time, with your kids and you want your time to do things, then everything you do needs to be based off of that. And so the rule of three can help you. So the rule of three, use it. Okay, again, your emotions mean nothing. <clears throat> everything you worked for is now going to get split down the middle. Everything. So any assets, vehicles, equipment, everything. Everything's going to get split down the middle. There were some things that I gave up. There were some things that I wanted to keep. Um, and you need to look at, you know, what do you want to do? Now, for me, when this whole process started, it started with me uh, living in the basement of, of my old house. That's where it started. From there, and it was probably the best move that I make. And I, you know, a lot of times, and depending on different states, because I know when people watch this, it's all different things. And I could talk about Maryland, but, um, one of the best things that I did uh, for just my overall mental health and everything was get out of the house. And that was probably the hardest thing because it put me away from the kids and all that. But I packed the camper up and I, I moved into my camper. Um, and while it was hard, um, looking back on it two years later was probably the best thing I did because it got me away. Um, you know, I was by family that actually cared for me. Um, you know, that's, that's something you really got to look at people that actually care for you. And that's, you figure that out in life. Um, I use this analogy. I heard this, uh, probably in the very beginning stages of, of my separation and all, um, you know, you need to treat people like trees. All right. So with trees, you have a couple different parts. So we're in the spring. You can see we got trees all around us. So right now, all of these trees have leaves on them. All right. And leaves are there. Uh, they can, people that are leaves in your life, they can give you shade. They can shade you from things. You know, if it's raining, 
you can run under a tree and you won't get totally wet. You'll still get a little wet, but they'll, you know, those leaves will shade you. Some people will shade you. If it's a hot summer day and you're outside in this field cutting and you need a break, you can pull that equipment underneath and you can get out. You can sit on a log and you can eat your lunch and you can drink water and you can have some shade and some relief from the sun, right? So there's people out there that are leaves. They shade you from things and they help you. But here's the thing you got to watch out for those leaves. In the fall, those leaves wither and die, right? Just like some people in your life. They, they're there for a little bit. And they, they're there to protect you and guide you, but eventually they're not going to be there anymore. And that could be a couple different reasons. It could be a natural death. It could be because they just move on. They move out of town. I mean, a, a variety of things, but I think you get my drift. And then you have, you know, the branches of a tree. Now, if you're anything like me, growing up on my grandparents' dairy farm, going into woods, um, you know, trees, you can jump on branches and you can swing from the branches, right? And they're strong. Some branches are really strong and you swing on that branch, you climb on that branch, you can take those strong branches and you can climb all the way to the tippy top of the tree and look out over top of everything, right? But every once in a while, those branches that seem like they're really strong, you grab them and they break and they leave you hanging or they, they let you fall, right? So branches can be good, but you also got to watch them. But the most important part of a tree are the roots of a tree. You know, those roots give that tree nourishment. Those roots are down in that ground and you don't see the roots. You know, if you walk out through this field right now, right where we're here standing, there are roots that are running under this zero turn right now. You can't see them. You don't see them. And I will tell you guys, my sister was that root system because that's where I went with my camper was my sister. And so if there's some other advice that I can give you is get, get out and away from whatever that toxic environment is. You know, if that toxic environment is the other person, you got to get away from it because it's going to eat you alive, especially if you're the one who's like, I did everything and I did that and I did that. Again, your feelings mean nothing. Okay. It's okay to have those feelings. I'm saying that you don't have them. You, you have them. Um, but they don't matter in the grand scheme of a divorce. So I moved into the camper and uh, probably the other thing of advice that I will give you is create a routine and stick to the routine. Now the routine can be, you know, if you have children, um, schedule of when you're going to see your kids, because as hard as it is on you, it's even harder on them. You take some kids where you were in the house all the time and, you know, you give my, my situation. I was working a lot, you know, I was working a lot to have the house, have property in another state, you know, retirement property and all this stuff. Like there was, there was a lot of things there. Well, it costs a lot, you know, going to Disney world costs a lot, going on cruises costs a lot, doing things as a family costs a lot. So, you know, I was working all the time, but I was still involved. Well, now I'm not there anymore. So creating a, a routine, you know, making sure that you're seeing your kids and you're having time with them and they know that you're there. Um, but also having a routine for yourself. And probably one of the best things that I did was, you know, I no longer had my chickens and my tractor and, and all my stuff. I, I mean, I didn't cut, I didn't use my chainsaw. I didn't start using my chainsaw until last July here on this property. That was the first time I had used my chainsaw and almost, uh, well over a year at least, if not longer. Um, and I'd love getting out there and bucking wood and doing all that stuff. So when I moved in that camper, you know, I didn't have any of that. And uh, it probably one of the best things that I did have was I had workout equipment. I had dumbbells. I had plates. I had racks. I had all that stuff. And I moved all of that stuff down to my sister's house into the pole barn. And it worked out because I had family that would come down and use the equipment. So, you know, they got a benefit out of it. And it was literally right there. So my routine was every morning at three o'clock in the morning, I was up and I was in that pole barn working out and it didn't matter if it was cold. It didn't matter if it was hot. Hell, one time it didn't even matter that there was no electricity. I literally took a flashlight, put it in there and I just went and worked out and did everything on a flashlight. But I did that to give me focus. You know, uh, meditation was another big thing. Uh, meditating. I 
was never a big proponent of meditating, but I'll tell you guys, I, I do it every morning, every morning that I get up, whether it's five minutes, whether it's 10 minutes, there's no set standard that I have to it. Um, but I make sure that I take time in the morning to get my thoughts wiped out of my head and be one with, with my entire self. And if you would have told me that five years ago, I'd be one, having a YouTube channel two having a YouTube channel about farming, which is something that I've, I just have always loved it. My grandparents dairy farm. I mean, anybody that knew me as a kid, I was all about the cows. I was all about the green tractors. That was, that was it. Like if, 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 if everything could have, if you could jump in a time machine and do it all over, I think maybe I would try to go back in time and figure out a way to save me, mom, pee pops, dairy farm and keep milking cows, you know, and if the world were right. But if you would have told me that I'd be talking about meditating <laughs> now, <laughs> I would have never believed you, but I'm a very big proponent of it. You got to take that time and establish that routine. You know, I'd work out, I'd eat my breakfast, me and Ruby would go for our walk. And then I would go to work, you know, and you, you got to create a routine. So routine is, is key. Create that routine. Um, have safe places to talk about those feelings that you have that are triggered. All right. Um, find a therapist. I'm serious. Find a therapist. A therapist is somebody you can go to and talk to and you can literally let everything out. Just let it out to your therapist and work through it. Uh, working with my therapist, it's, I worked with her today. Been doing it for two years now. And it has literally been the best thing for me is having that therapist to go to every week. You know, and now with, I guess that was the one good thing about COVID. You can do it in person or you can do it virtual. And since I can't drive, uh, my last two sessions have been virtual, but I don't miss it. You know, I, I'm there and I'm doing it and it, and it it gives me that to be able to talk about my feelings, go through that. And, and I've learned so much about myself, you know, working with my therapist to learn about red flags in a relationship and green flags in a relationship. And, you know, it kind of, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that here in a second, but right now I'm just kind of talking about the stuff that you need to focus on when you're going through it and talking to a therapist helps, uh, having a good, you know, peer group, uh, other people that might be going through the same thing that you're going through. Um, people again, that you trust, you know, not, not the ones that are just there for the gossip to get involved. Cause they, that's, they're, they're all over the place, man. And they will continue to be all over the place that, that never goes away. Um, and again, that goes along with knowing the parts of a tree, right? Uh, you know, now that my divorce is final, you know, I don't, have to bite my tongue. So when somebody comes along that I know doesn't have good intentions, I just tell them straight up. Like, I don't hide it. I tell them I don't like them right to their face. And usually what that does is it calls them to turn around, walk away from me. I'm like, yep, keep on going because I ain't got time for you. You know, I'm not, I had to play nice. I don't have to play nice no more. You know, that is the one good joy when you finally get divorced is, you know, for certain circumstances and people, you, you don't have to talk to them. So I don't, um, you know, I, I've said this in some other videos. I listen to a lot of Eric Thomas, a lot of Bishop Jakes, uh, a lot of Steve Harvey, a lot of Les Brown and, you know, Eric Thomas, man, I got to meet him a couple months ago. And, uh, you know, when I was talking about that routine, being in a pole barn, man, that's what I was blasting. I was blasting ET. You think about a, a white guy that's doing homesteading and, you know, all this stuff. And here I am blasting ET in the pole barn. I mean, I listen to ET. I still listen to ET all the time, but he talks about it. If, if they're not adding value, they're the first to go. If they're not adding value. They are the first to go. All right. So, so know who the people are that are adding value. Again, look at people as trees. Are they leaves? Are they branches? Are they roots? You know, and categorize them in those three ways. Uh, the most important thing is Take a lot of time for yourself. Um, don't rush into any relationships. I, I haven't. I haven't had any relationships. I haven't had anything, uh, and I don't need to because I still have my own thing that I want to do. I mean, I'm focusing on this property. I'm focusing on things, um, but at the same time, you know, in the back of my mind, 
I am thinking about, you know, eventually I need to get myself back out there, but I know that I'm not ready. You know, it's okay to be by yourself. I think that was probably the hardest thing for me when I first started going through divorce. You know, it was 11 years of marriage and being with somebody for almost 15 years. And that was by myself. I think probably the hardest thing that I ever had was the first weekend that I was by myself. I didn't have the kids. I was living in the camper at my sister's house. Was going to the grocery store on a Friday night. And that's when it hit me. And I remember walking through those aisles and kind of like tearing up about it. Like, hell man, <laughs> 15 years and this is, this is what I get. Like all that, all that hard work and all that everything. And this is, this is it, you know, but, um, looking back on it now, I didn't know it then. That's the best thing. Just getting your freedom back, doing what you want to do. I, I've gone out and watched movies by myself. I've gone out to restaurants and sat by myself and ate. I don't need nobody to sit with me. I don't need them. I don't need them here. Like I have my core group of people. I've had people because of this injury. I can't drive. I have people that I can go to. They pick me up. They take me to my, to the chicken whispers, baseball games or practices. They, they pick me and the kids up and take us places that we need to go. Like, I know who those people are, but I know that because I took the time to work on me. And I know, you know, it sounds weird, but when you're first going through a divorce, I think that's everybody. You hear that from a lot of people. I just don't want to be alone. I'm like, man, that's all I want to do is be alone now. You know, and some people will look at that and say, oh, that's a problem. You want to be alone for the rest of your life? Well, you know, Les Brown puts it this way. There's a one to a box theory. When we leave this world, there is one guarantee out there. None of us, none of us watching this right now are going to be here 150 years from now, right? When you leave this world, there is nobody crawling in that box with you on the ground. You go in there by yourself. What is left is what you leave to the people that are still here. You know, I look back at this channel is dedicated towards my grandparents' dairy farm. This stuff that my grandparents instilled in me, I'm showing you guys by doing this video. That's what they instilled in me. The, the legacy is what you leave to people. It's, it's the re how they remember you. Did you make an impact? You know, for me, my biggest impact is on the Lily Tamer and the Chicken Whisperer. Showing them how to be good people. Showing them it's okay to have emotions and feelings, but regulate that and know how to deal with it, you know? And, and being there to teach them things and show them things because, I mean, I can't really go into it, but this could have been a lot worse. There, there was a very good chance that I'm not here anymore. Um, so a fractured ankle, I'll, I'll take that over what the, what the other part would have been. I wouldn't be doing this video with you guys. This, this time that we have here is precious, right? But don't waste it on the wrong people. The only way you learn that is learning who you are and what you want in life. Uh, so don't rush into relationships. Um, take that time for you to figure yourself out and where you want to go and, you know, f find out who you are. You know, I think a lot of times when we get into marriages and relationships, we, we put all that time and attention into our family and you see it all the time. You look at families, you know, and they, they run the kids to soccer practice and they leave soccer practice and they go to baseball practice and then they leave here and they go there. I mean, don't get me wrong. We do it, right? I do it. Um, but all of that's going to go away. Uh, I think, you know, being with my sister and seeing my nephews and my niece and watching them grow up. I mean, I remember when they were, you know, remember the day they were born and now they're out doing their own thing. Kids aren't always going to be there. Enjoy the time. Like I, those kids are with me. We enjoy our time together. We have a lot of fun. We do a lot of fun things and those things don't always have to cost a lot of money. They don't have to be extravagant. Sometimes it's, just having a campfire and doing s'mores and laughing at the dogs running around. It's, it's just stuff like that. There's nothing crazy to it, but enjoy that time because it's going to change. You know, I'm not going to be here on this property forever. My game plan is to go into the mountains somewhere, you know, but for right now, this is, this is like my slice of heaven right here, man. This is, this is everything that I could ever ask for.
right? And I'm happy with this. So take that time to, to figure out what you want. And then when you figure out what you want, and, and Eric Thomas says this, spend every minute of the day working on it. Spend every minute of your day working on it. And, you know, I've been sidelined with this injury. I can't go to work. I can't do anything. I mean, the most I can do is get on this zero turn and, you know, check on animals. I got neighbors helping me with things. And, but while I'm sitting there letting this rest and icing this and, and getting it ready so I can get back to normal, I'm out there looking up ways that I can write this place off as a farm and how I can change this so that I can go legit with selling eggs and selling meat. I'm researching stuff. I'm looking at LLCs. I'm looking at all that. If you would have told me two years ago that I'd be doing that, I, I would have said, no, my world is ending. It, it wasn't ending, man. It was just beginning, but you couldn't see it. And people were telling me that and I didn't listen to them. So if you're watching this right now and you're like in a dark place and you don't think you're going to be able to get through this divorce, man, I'm going to tell you right now, it's probably the blessing that you needed because it was definitely the blessing I needed. Something that I thought was literally my worst day. Now I look back on it and I'm like, man, bring it on. Fractured ankle and all, man, bring it on. Because everything that they've tried to throw at me, I I've come right back at it. And, uh, you know, I I I'll end on this for this video because I know this is getting kind of lengthy. Um, I'm not saying that I'm a big religious person, right? Uh, but if you would have known me five years ago, there's no way I stepped foot in a church. Well, I go to church and, uh, the church that I have is, is there's two, two really good churches that, that I go to and that I listen to online a lot of times. Um, and the reason why I listen to it online is because of my workload when, before I got hurt. Um, it was just easier for me to listen to it and watch it online while I was working on stuff here at the house. You know, yes, my routine has changed. I've sold the camper. I don't have the camper anymore. My gym equipment is still down at my sister's pole barn. I don't get up and work out at three o'clock in the morning. But that routine hasn't changed. I work on the house. I'm I'm doing things around here. I'm taking care of the animals. Like there's still a routine. So even though I'm not lifting the weights, I'll get all that back. I'll get the weights back in and to this new house in the basement and I'll get back into that routine. But listening to going to church and just kind of listening to some of the things there really helped me. Um, you know, I do think I do. I've always believed in a God. Um, and I do think God is there to teach us lessons. And, you know, when you try to hang on to something, when you try to hang on to a marriage that isn't working out, when you try to hang on to that, I really do think God's like, okay, you're not listening to me. So I'm going to make this really hard on you because you're not listening. You need to listen. And you're not. Um, you know, I look at, I look at this, man, prior to this happening man, my workload on everything was just over the top. And I think this was, I was telling one of my neighbors the other day, I think this is just God's way of going, Hey, you need to slow down. <laughs> you're not listening to me. I've given you some clues that you need to slow down and you're not listening. So guess what? I'm going to make you sit down. Now you got to sit on that couch and you can't drive and you can't go places and you need to slow down. So if, uh, if he's listening, I'm listening to you, God, I got you. Um, but you know, having that spiritual thing, and I'm not saying you got to be a Christian, you got, I don't care, whatever, just, just do what you need to do. But, uh, but it definitely helps. It definitely helps. And it helps put a lot of things into perspective. And, you know, it's funny, you listen to Steve Harvey and all that, and they talk about all these self-help books. Well, it's really just the Bible when you go and read it, all those self-help books and how to make yourself a better person or get rich or all that. Like it's literally the same things they talk about in the Bible. It's just, they, they took all that stuff out of there. They reworded it. They put some fancy terms to it and they slapped it in a book and you know, we bought it and read it or, you know, did a, did a, uh, an audible book or whatever. Um, but, uh, if you're going, if you're in that beginning stages of a divorce, divorce, just, just hang in there. Um, it'll, it'll get better. It'll, it'll get there. There's, 
there's still going to be ups and downs. There's still going to be ups and downs even after you do it. I still have ups and downs. I think everybody does. But um, the key is that you're still here. And, you know, Steve Harvey says this, and I'll end on this. He, uh, he says, we're all batting a thousand for getting through our really hard days because we're still here. So think about that. Some of these days that you thought was going to be your hardest, you're still here. You're watching my video right now. That's proof that you're still here. And if you stayed all the way through me rambling and all this, well, I really appreciate that. Thanks. Um, but I do hope you, you get something out of it. And if you're struggling, you'll get there. Um, you will definitely, you'll get through it and you'll be a better person for it. So just keep fighting. Don't give up. Um, hopefully, uh, next week I can, uh, still going to be sidelined. I got like three more weeks of this. Um, so I've really got to be limited in what I'm doing. And that's mainly because I need this to heal the right way. Uh, so I don't have any major problems later on. Um, but, uh, you know, baby chicks are, are getting big. They're, uh, they're less than a week away from getting moved out from the brooder out into the chicken tractor. So, uh, the, the kids helped me move the chicken tractor up the hill. They were huge help in that, get it close to the house. And, uh, like I said, I got people to help me and get stuff moved around. So figure out those roots of your tree and put some time and attention into those roots. Don't, uh, don't just focus on the leaves and the, and the branches. Focus on those roots because the roots are the ones that care about you the most and they'll always be there for you. So, um, as always, if you like this kind of stuff, I know this is different than what I normally do, but I really couldn't do too much. So I just thought I would do this. And if it's something that's been really weighing on my mind and I, I've done a lot of talks and I've, uh, you know, gone to a lot of groups and, and talking to different people and just trying to, um, you know, teach people things and show them stuff. And I've had some people tell me that, hey, maybe you should do something with the YouTube channel and talk about your journey. And, you know, I don't want to go into too much of it because it is private. There was a whole lot that I left out, but um, I just wanted to get to the meat and potatoes of it, which probably took 20, 25 minutes. So as always, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel, follow us along, and I'll see you on the next one.